first, I want to give honor to who honor is due, the Lord, who is the head of my life. I want to give honor to my pastor, our pastor, yes. And also, I just want to give a special uh, shout out to my lovely mother right here that will be bringing the word before you, Sister Jill. Um, yeah. So before I pray, I just wanted to um, read a scripture and, you know, just give thanks and honor my mother a little bit. You know, a lot of times, just because they're our mother, sometimes we forget to just give thanks, you know. We just call on them a lot of times, ask them for things, you know. Say, Mom, this, Mom, that, I need that. You know, Mom, uh, you know, asking for guidance or just help. But we don't just sometimes, we forget to just give thanks. Because it's it's not like you can just say, oh, I'm going to be a mom today and a mom tomorrow. There's a mom 24-7. So I just want to read uh, a verse. So my mom, real quick, um, she had asked me to pray, uh, I think it was like a week ago, she had said. So she was like, that's enough time to get myself together. Make sure I got what I need. Make sure I'm in my word. Make sure that I'm right with the Lord. I said, okay, yes, ma'am. I was like, all right, mom. And so did I do that? Kind of. I did find the scripture this morning. But, hey, the Lord works in mysterious ways. So um, I'll be reading uh, Proverbs 31, verses 28 through 31. And then I'll give a second for you guys to get that and then move that up. And so uh, it reads, her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but she excels them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing. But a woman who fears the Lord no, she shall be praised. Give her a fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. And the reason that just sat with me so much is because as it reads in verse 29, it says, sorry, it says, many daughters have done well, but she excelled them all. And I know sometimes I can be um, a son, but... <laughs> You know, my mom is not just one of those daughters. She has sold them all. And, <laughs> yeah, I kind of knew I was going to cry, but it is what it is. Um, and so also, again, before I pray, I have two pictures that kind of, I felt like, um, kind of um, explain who my mom is. The first picture was, this was us in California with my family. And the reason I pulled this picture up is because this is my mom. On the, this is her. She's always um, caring about us as her family, friends. She's always putting them first. And a lot of times, her doing that, she kind of forgets to, uh, to care about herself. And so I have another picture that shows her. And you know, uh, this is my, this is my mom. I take this lightly. Um, everything I owe is to the Lord and my parents, especially my mother. So now I'll finally pray. Uh, <laughs> I, I think I did. So now I'll finally pray. So I just ask that you please uh, bow your heads and close your eyes as you go before the door. Father God, well, I just want to come to you saying thank you, Father God. Thank you for everything that you do for us, Father God. Thank you for all our beautiful mothers, Father God, that you have blessed us with, Lord. Lord, they are warriors. They are daughters, but they excel them all, Father God. Lord, I just want to say thank you for mine, Father God. She's one in a million, Lord. Father God, I just want to say thank you for this opportunity to come before your people and share a little bit about my mom and just pray, Father God. 
Lord, I just ask that you allow this word that my mother is going to preach, Sister Joe, that you allow it just to bless at least one soul, Father God, which I know it will. Lord, I just ask that you allow this word to touch everybody in this room, Father God. Lord, I ask that you allow us, if not anything else, just give honor unto our mothers, Father God, for it is their day, just one special day out of the year, Father God. But Lord, allow us to give honor to them throughout the week for the rest of the year, Father God, 24-7 like they do us, Father God. Lord, I ask that you allow the, uh, you know, the devil tries to get, some, get us with that uh, nervousness, Father God. I ask that you will take it away, Father God. I ask that you allow the service to flow how you want to flow, Father God. And Lord, when you do all these things, I just about to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise in Jesus' name. After that, I'm like, Ooh, it's a good thing I don't wear makeup. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, thank you so much, son. That was so sweet. And, you know, while I'm getting this laptop going, let's pray it works today. Um, okay. Yeah, just. Uh, but you know what? Before we get started, I just want to give honor to a few women in this church. You know, on Mother's Day, they always give honor to the people in the world. But I want to give honor to the place where the Lord has grown me. And so without further ado, um, thanking my son for that prayer. Elder Yaz, can you stand up? I know you don't want to, but can you stand up? Can, can we just love on her a little bit? Can we just love on her? She hates this. But there's so many of us that we are where we are in God because of you because of your tears, because of your fasting, because of your prayers. And you deserve your flowers, Elder Yaz. Amen. So we love you. Let's give her one more hand. You know, she, she's one of those women who like to serve in the back. When she needs to be on, she's on. But each and every one of us that know her, who's had a relationship with her, knows that when we go calling, she's right there. And so... Um, I'm going to go ahead and get started. You know, Pastor Yaz and um, Pastor Robinson, I just want to thank you for trusting me with the word this morning. And I'm so grateful because they were on vacation. Isn't it nice to have a time of rest? And I'm so thankful that they get to do that. And so, um, you know, I'm just so thankful. You guys, I'm so excited. And don't worry, we're getting ready to get started. Are you ready? Are you ready to see what God is going to do for you this morning? Amen. All right. So we can go to the next slide. I just wanted to give a little fact. I always love to give a little fact. How many people know show of hands when Mother's Day was established? Prior to me putting this on the uh, slide. Okay, so it was established in 1914. It was established because they wanted to give a day where they would um, publicly express their uh, appreciation for the sacrifices that mothers made. And it's sad that we had to have a day for that, but you know, we'll take our day, amen? So I just wanted to give a little fact about that. And so, how many of us know, um, when it comes to Mother's Day, what's the number one thing that mothers want? Go ahead, what do you think? Okay, so she got the love part right, but when, right. But the biggest thing that went, the mothers wanted was just time with their family. All they wanted, they didn't want the gifts, they didn't want the applause, they wanted those precious memories with their families. And so I just want us to remember that. When today is over, all your mothers want is your time and attention. You know, everybody, for, for Mother's Day, us mothers are so proud because when we look out, we see our babies. This is the one day the mothers can guilt the kids into, you coming to church, right? But you know what, I'm thankful because it's really not a guilting because if you weren't supposed to be here, you wouldn't be here. And so I'm so thankful. And so as a mother, if we can go to the next slide, this is not in no means for you to read, but when I was studying and it talked about the 31 characteristics of a virtuous woman, the things that stood out was the fact that she had to be God-fearing. She had to be tireless, and she had to be honored by her family. And so I'm going to sit there for a second. 
when you think about you as a mother, when you think about your mothers, if you look at the things on the board, we know that they're God-fearing, they're tireless, and they're honored by their families. And if you have a mom that is God-fearing, you've already won. Amen? Let's go to the next slide. And so as I was studying, I was thinking about the type of mothers that we have. And so you would think, oh, that's just common knowledge. Like, we know what a mother is. But no, you have a mother, you have a godly mother, and you have a spiritual mother. And we're going to talk about that today. So one thing that I've learned from my past is you give your three points, and then you let the people go home. So we're going to talk about a mother, a godly mother, and a spiritual mother. Amen. And so what is a godly mother? Well, let's first start with what is a mother? So by definition, a mother is defined as a woman in relation to her child or her children. That's what the definition is. A mother is a woman in relation to her child and her children, right? Very simple. But let's talk about a godly mother. It says a godly mother is a woman who allows God to sanctify, purify, love, redeem, and shape her in life circumstances. The journey of becoming a godly mother doesn't start when you give birth or adopt a child. It begins when you're knowing your identity in Jesus. And so if we leave here today, the one thing that I want you to understand is you got to determine, are you a mother, a godly mother? And then we're going to talk about the spiritual mother. It says right here that a godly mother begins when we know our identity in Jesus. It is so nice. My son had me crying. It's wonderful. Give me flowers. Appreciate it. But none of that matters if I don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And so I'm standing here today because in 2014, yeah, before that I was a mother. But then in 2014, I became a godly mother. And I always tell my children that God loved you so much that he cleaned up your mother and father. When we came to the church, my children were 13, 8, 7, and 1 in the womb. I'm going to repeat that. My children were 13, 8, 7, and in the womb. And God said enough was enough for you being out there. You can't straddle and do both, Jill. So we knew of God. But we didn't have a relationship with God. And so on Mother's Day today, yeah, we're going to go home and eat good. Yeah, we're going to spend some quality time. But I don't want any of us to leave here thinking that if we don't have Jesus in our life, that we're going to be able to do anything for God. To include bringing up those children that he's given obligation for us to raise. That is so important. And I want you to know that you have a community around you. You're not alone. You know what my mother told me the other day? She was like, baby, because she's been reading her word and she sits before the Lord for hours. And she said, but see, we're in different seasons. You're a young mom still. You got kids on every milestone and they all command your attention. So she said, you got to give yourself grace that you can't do what I'm doing right now. See, she's in a season where she's getting ready to be able to pour out because she has the time. I'm in a season where I got to be engaged and ready and available. Because, see, the devil will come in to those relationships with your children and try to distance you. And right now in the world that we live in, our children need our covering. See, the Bible tells us that a youth was about 40 years old. Read your word. And so when I said, when I read that, I was like, ooh, 40? I'm 44. But you know what that showed me? That showed me that during those times, when the children were with their mothers and their fathers, there was a grooming that was happening. There was a preparation that was happening. So when they went out into the world, they were ready. And so many of us today, we just push them out, and they're not ready. We're so busy with life that when they call us, we don't hear them. Every time they come to us, we're like, figure it out. No, that's not what Jesus would have us to do. And so as much as I love being a mother, I take so seriously being a godly mother. You know, I'm, let me tell you this. I've always been transparent with you guys. When I get it wrong and the Spirit corrects me, immediately 
immediately I go and apologize to my children or my husband or maybe not to my husband immediately, but to my kids. <laughs> look, 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 I'm going to tell the truth. It's shame the devil. guys this word so let's talk about a spiritual mother so we talked about a mother we talked about a, god, a godly mother and now we're going to talk about a spiritual mother because this is where I really want to spend some time and make sure that we give time for this now a spiritual mother a spiritual mother means instilling Christ's confidence in a young woman so that she can leave you and face the world let me read that again a spiritual mother means instilling Christ's confidence in a young woman so that she can leave you and face the world. This is not a priority. I mean, this is, this is the priority of the church, and it's not a program. So why am I telling you that today? Because so many of us, if we scan from here to here, do you know being a spiritual mother doesn't require an age commitment? Do you know being a spiritual mother has nothing to do with where you are in your career, your academics? No, it's where you are with God. And I know Maya, she's been in the church longer than I've been uh, serving the Lord. I don't care how old she is. I could get something from her. So we got to let the ego go. And we have to really adapt what it is that the church needs right now. We need more spiritual mothers to help push us forward. We need more spiritual mothers that are going to be like, you know what? Come here, baby. Come here. And, and talk to them because you have the gift of discernment and word of wisdom and word of knowledge. So when you approach that young woman, you're not going to hurt her Amen. with your words or your look. Amen. Amen. And so when I told Pastor Rod, I said, Pastor Rod, he was like, what are you thinking about? So my title was supposed to be, it's time to fight. And so if I leave you with anything today, we need some warriors in this church. Yeah. It is time for the women to come off the benches, off of the honey and hot tea, and it's time for us to fight. It's time for us to pull up our sleeves, yeah. fall on our knees, and to fight for these young people. Yeah. I don't think that's too hard. Yeah. I don't think that's too hard. All he's asking us to do is sanctify ourselves and, and um, you know, uh, crucify the flesh. Yeah. And fight for these young women. Fight for these young men. That's what we can do. And so when we leave here today, women, I'm looking at each and every one of us. I don't care if we're five to however old we are. We got a work to do. We got a job to do. And we have to love those that are coming up around us, no matter their age, and ask the Lord, Lord, what would you have me to do today? Who would you have me to pray for today? Who do you want me to send a scripture to today? Who would you like me to check on today? Yeah. It can't be about you all the time. I understand we go through things, and I understand depending on your season, we're multitasking and doing everything. But what are we trying to do right now? We are trying to learn how to build up the church because we're in the end days. Maybe some of us don't believe it, but we're in the end days. And so... If we're going to continue to do the things that God is calling us to do, we got to be strong in our conviction. If you're not feeling a burden for anybody but yourself, something is wrong. I'm going to say that again. If you don't feel a burden for anything but yourself, something is wrong. And I would admonish you, encourage you to go pray and ask the Lord and fast and stay before him. Because if you read your word, all the prophets, that's what they did. They had a burning hurt and burden for the people of God. And they did what God, they opened their mouth and did what God told them to do. And even though Israel was backslidden and they would give up on God, those prophets would never give up on the people. And we cannot give up on the people. We are making disciples that make disciples that make disciples. And we cannot do that in a godless state. So if anything today, I'm going to continue to encourage you. Every time I get in this pulpit, the end times are near. And it takes a whole village for us to go forward. Amen? Amen. Amen. Do you believe that? Yes. So I'm going to tell you this. Don't give up on your wayward children. Don't. Don't. Because if that was the case, I wouldn't be before you. I had spiritual mothers in California. 
I had my mom. I had people that I didn't even know praying for me, that I would come to my senses. And at 35 years old, at 35 years old, I came to my senses. And I stopped playing with the world. Because when I finally said, Lord, I'm yours. Whatever you want, I'm here. Lord, everything that I am is because of you. And when I gave my life to the Lord, my life became sweet. When I gave my life to the Lord, I could finally truly love my children the way they deserve to be loved. Yes, yes. Do you know when I came to God, there was so much apologizing I had to do because as a mother, I thought I had it all together. But as a godly mother and the Holy Spirit came in, he got a conviction in me and he said, your words, Jill, are too strong. You're too hard. You're too tough. I get that's you, but that's not them. And so some of us are holding on to past hurts. Some of us are dealing with trauma we haven't dealt with. And we're passing that down to generation from generation to generation. It is time out for that. Yes. Satan, the Lord, rebuke you in Jesus' name. Yes. We are taking back our generation. Yes. We are taking back the fact that the God has called us to be a righteous, peculiar people. But you have to believe it. And if you're not willing to fight, and you're not willing to get on your knees, and you're not willing to consecrate, and you're not willing to give up the world, then what fight does your, ch your children have? What hope does your marriage have? Yeah. You cannot be a carnal Christian and walk this walk. The devil going to beat you upside and down. I'm here to tell you today, it is time out for playing this I'm a Christian over here, but I'm in the world over here. And when I'm in church, I'm going to be this. Yeah. Nah. Mm-mm. Because the Holy Spirit is going to be like, nope. There was a time, if you read your word, when they came to the holiest of holies, if they had sin in them, they dropped dead. They wouldn't even come. Come on now. Yeah. Yeah. We serve a, merc a merciful God. And so, you know what, y'all? I'm so sorry. This is supposed to be a Mother's Day happy. But you know what? When I look at my people, when I look at my family, I want us all to go to heaven. Yeah. And so the only way to do that is you got to preach Jesus. The only way to do that is you got to call sin, sin. Yeah. The only way to do that is you got to look at yourself and get the, get the what out of your own eye. Yeah. Right? And so, I'm gonna, um, let me calm down a little bit. Woo, I get so excited, y'all. Because I want, I want us, are we getting something today? Do we understand the importance of what we need to do? Does everybody believe that, that are women in here that you can be a spiritual mother? Can, can I share this with you? Please don't let the devil get in your ear and feel like if I sign up to be a spiritual mom, mm -hmm. it's too much of a commitment. It's too heavy. We just had a fellowship not too long ago with the women. We didn't plan nothing. All we did was call the restaurant we, who showed up, who showed up, and we had a good time in the Lord. And that's exactly how intentional it is with being a spiritual mother. The Lord is going to show you who he wants you to pour into. And all you got to do is come with what you got. Come with what you got. And then if the Lord wants you to do a little this and to do a little that, lead with what the Spirit tells you to do. See, we make it complicated because we're trying to do more than what God is calling us to do. You know, and I'll, I'll say this like this. Elder Yaz, um, she has a very busy schedule. But in 2014, when she saw me, and I know I've given this testimony, she saw the potential and where God could take me. And it wasn't like, we didn't have like sessions after sessions. We had pockets of time. And then when she would talk to me, she would speak life into me. She would tell me this or she would tell me that. Then I would go sit at Debbie's feet and this or that. Or I would call up Elder Tanya. What I'm trying to tell you is, spiritual mothers, you got to have a spiritual mother. What I'm trying to tell you is, we can't do this if you yourself won't take the first step and reach out. What is it that you're seeking? What is it that you want? You got to have a plan. That's not just for your work. You got to have a plan in God. We serve a God who's very strategic. If you read the book of Nehemiah and Jeremiah, he's very strategic. Why would he not be like that with us? So on this day, as we celebrate mothers, I want you to go home and I want you to think about as a mother, number one, 
Am I a godly mother? Only you could answer that. Lord, clean me up. Fix my heart. Lord, show me me. Then I want you to ask yourself, in the church, where could I be of more service? Who could I help? Who could I give a ride to? You know, my husband preached a while ago about the silver saints. We can't forget about our silver saints. They are so wise and so much, have so much wisdom. Sister Barbara, Sister Elsie, if you ever just talk to them, so much wisdom. Sister Lowe, Sister Linda, and I'm not saying y'all are old or nothing like that. Please don't think that. I'm saying you guys are wise in years. You're wise in years. And it's important to say that because there's just some things that you won't know unless you lived it. And, you know, so I just want to encourage you, like, you, you have to know. Study about the di different generations and how to minister to them. Because do you know, you cannot do this thing on a, on a, on a wing and a hope. Yeah, there's some things that you can do that the Lord will work with you. But there's some things that you really need to go before God. And all you got to do is go here. This has everything you need. This has everything you need. And I'm, and I'm telling you, it's so good. If you, me and my mom study Acts, it is like a soap opera. Get your popcorn. It is so good. But you get to learn. And so as we close up, because I want us to really take time to pray, we're going to have a general prayer for the families. And, I, and, and just give me a few minutes because once we call that prayer, I want the families to be together so that we can pray. Because this is so important. See, the devil is upset today because we got an assignment. We got a charge. We fired up leaving out of here. We understand what the assignment is. Now it's time for us to move in it. And see, the Lord has anointed each and every one of us in here, even the babies. And it's, and it's time that we start having confidence in what God has already given us. And so I'll share this, and then we're going to wrap up and close. My children, um, you know, you guys know I always talk about my babies and how I learned so much for, from them. And each of them are in different stages of their life and their careers. But you know, the one thing that I'm so thankful of in these different stages of life and careers, they're in their different seasons with God too. Just because it doesn't look like what we think does not mean God is not with them. Just because they're not moving the way we think does not mean God's hand is not on them. And the reason why I say that, mothers, is let's not count out all the prayers we've had. If we have prayed that the children belong to the Lord like Hannah did, I loved it because, yes, Hannah was barren. But Hannah vowed that if the Lord would touch her womb with a man-child, that she would give that baby back to the Lord as a Nazarite to serve the Lord. Yeah. But see, what they don't say is that she prophesied in chapter 2 about the other children she was going to have. She had a total of seven. And see, many people don't say she had three boys and two sons and one didn't make it. But the point is, she prayed and she poured out her soul to the Lord for that one. And that one, because she trusted the Lord with faith, it ended up being more. So how many of us today, we've prayed, we've cried, we fasted, we stayed before the Lord. But then out of our own mouth, we curse the very things we pray for. We, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, because the Lord had to show me, you're raising kings and queens. You're raising men and women of God, and you got to start praying for their assignment now. You saw one of the babies up here. That ain't me. That's all God. But you know what I take pride in saying I did? Stand before the Lord crying and fasting for him. And I'm not being boastful, because God has called us to do that. And so if we learn anything today, what do we learn? We learn what a mother was. We learn what a godly mother was. We learn what a spiritual mother was. And we learn why the spiritual mothers are so important to the church. Stop cursing your families and these babies with circumstances of right now. Look towards the future and ask the Lord to show you how to pray and understand the very men and women of valor that the Lord is raising up. These younger people that we have birthed are the next generation. And so as a mother standing up here, it ain't about me. Once I had these kids, it was about them. 
And so I'm learning how to speak, what did the song say? Blessings over my children for generations to generations to generations. And so I want us to get our minds together and I want us to find our families and I want us to take time and pray over the families because if the family, families are united, the church is strong. Amen? So let's do that, please. Please find your families and I want everybody to come up with your families. Find your husbands, your wives, your children, your cousins, aunties, uncles, whoever you're here with today and come up. And if you don't have your family with you today, please still, I want you to come up because you have a family that you're interceding for. We're we going to let the Spirit do what the Spirit does. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yes, yes. And, and please, singles, come. This is a family affair, so let's please come together. I don't want anybody feeling left alone or behind. The devil is a lie. This is a family affair. And we're going to take the time and allow the spirit to do what only he could do. Amen. All right. Do we have everybody in place? You guys are so beautiful. I pray y'all got something today. Yes, Lord. Okay, if everybody could please just close their eyes. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we brought your people before you. Father God, we know your spirit is here. And Lord, as your spirit moves across the sanctuary, Lord, I pray that you will touch every family at member. Lord, I pray that you will go in between Lord, for the deliverance, the healing, whatever it is that they need, Lord. Lord, I pray that you will do the very thing that only you can do. Lord, as we have the families before you for the church, Lord, we pray that you will begin to unite them even the more. Lord, allow them to have a communication that is so sweet and godly. Lord, I pray that there will be an understanding between the parents and the children. Father God, I pray that you will be able to reconcile those who are hurting. Father God, I know we may be here and we look great, but Lord, I'm asking for you to touch the one that's hurting on the inside. Lord, I'm asking you to go and touch the family that's on the brink of breaking down, Lord, or the, the ones that are about to feel like, hey, this is over. Because God, through you, nothing is over. Lord, I'm a testimony to what you can do. Father God, I pray right now that all the men that are covering us in this church, Lord, lift them up. For, Lord, they are standing in obligation to you. Father God, to lead not only their families, but to be leaders in this church. Father God, they're the ones that's going to be standing, covering us, Lord, from the enemy. Lord, I pray that you will strengthen these women, Lord, to not only be submissive unto their husbands and to the church, but be submissive unto you, Lord. Lord, I pray that we will stop fighting against the things that you've called us to do, Lord. Lord, I'm praying right now that people will come together and see that their disobedience delays their blessing. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, bless every child, every baby, every teenager under the sound of my voice, every young adult, every marriage, Lord. Do what only you can do, Lord. And Father God, when you do this thing today, we will be so ever grateful to give you all the honor, all the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. You can return to your seats. Thank you so much. And I pray as you guys leave today, and um, I'll have uh, Pastor Robinson will dismiss us, but I just want you to, when you go out to dinner or whatever you're going to do with your families, don't just immediately leave here and just get to socializing. Allow the spirit, the spirit is here. The spirit is here. And I just want you to sit in that a little bit. Amen. And just think about what God is going to do if you only believe, sir. Come on, somebody give God a great big hand. Oh my God. 
Spirit of the Lord is in this place today. Oh, I want to thank God. I want to just tell you very quickly, um, when normally during the year on Father's Day, I preach. And then on Mother's Day, I have pa asked Pastor Yaz to teach, preach, and she preaches. And this year, um, in a conversation with Sister Jill, she felt that the Lord had laid a word on her heart. And uh, I said, well, I, I know normally Pastor Yaz would minister on Mother's Day. And I remember talking to Pastor Yaz, and Pastor Yaz says, oh, no, Sister Jill's good. She can <laughs> preach. <laughs> Amen. Those of you who have ever, uh, who've been called into ministry, we're not itching to preach. It may look like it when we're up here, uh, but that's the anointing that flows like honey. But uh, it was the spirit of the Lord, and, and the Lord gave me a peace and a comfort. And I said, okay, praise the Lord. And then when uh, Minister Jill began to share with me just a little bit of the thought, because, you know, the Lord gives you your thought in pieces. Six months, he may give you a, a one line, one sentence, six months ahead, and then he doesn't give you the rest until the day before. So it, you never know what the Lord is going to do. But the Lord gave me a piece about uh, what Minister Jill was ministering. And when she was saying, essentially, it was a war cry. And she said, it's time to fight. She said, it's a war cry. She said, because the sisters, she said, we, when she said we, but, you know, you have to become warriors for Jesus now. And it was a, it was a call to action. And I said, Lord, yes, Lord, yes. And as she began to minister today, I could just sense the unification in the spirit. Amen. And some of you needed to hear that word just to be encouraged to move on. Amen. And I love what she said. She said, um, she said she came to a place in her life where the Spirit said, stop playing with the world. Stop playing with the world. And I, I was so encouraged by that because she said she was 35 years old. And right now we have all age ranges in here. And I want to let you know it's never too late. Somebody say, it's never too late. It's never too late. Come on, give God a hand. It's never too late. Amen. Okay, come on. Praise the Lord. So we're going to get ready to wrap things up, but I do want to say um, to Pastor Yaz, I want to say Happy Mother's Day to Pastor Yaz. Amen. We, um, we just came off a of vacation, so I took, I took uh, for Mother's Day, I took Pastor Yaz and, and Sister Jada on a great big cruise. And so that all week long, it was Mother's Day. <laughs> Amen. All week long. Praise the Lord. I just want to say it's so good to see so many faces. If you are here today and you're, you're in town because mom asked you to be here, um, I want you just to stand. If you're here today and you're here, here, like I see uh, Joseph. I know mom wanted Joseph and Victoria to be here. Come on, come on, Leroy, stand up. I want you to stand. If you're in town today because mom asked you to be here specifically, come on, where's, uh, where's Davon? Davon and my sister, yes. Lauren and Shannon, oh, Katrina, yes. And I just think that's so wonderful. And I love what Sister Jill said. She said, when, when parents look out, we just see our babies. We see our 40-year-old babies. We see our 22-year-old babies, amen. We see Davon, he's traveling the world, just living. But he, he's not a baby anymore, but to the parents, that's what we see, amen. So I just want to say I'm so grateful. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord, amen. Pastor Yaz has a quick announcement. I want to say welcome to all of our guests today. And I see Brother Terry. Oh, my God. And, and Sister Tanya's mother. What's your, I always forget your first name. Sister Linda and Brother Terry from Surrey, Virginia. Can you give them a great big hand? Oh, my God. See, what you don't know is that S S Sister Linda and Brother Terry, have they've really been unofficial members of Harvest for about 27 years now because their daughter, she was just a young, single woman, who gave, she was only 25 years old and gave her life to Jesus. And we were all babies. And we, and we were having church in a house. There's, none of this existed. This is, I don't even, we were just having church in a house, just loving Jesus. And I remember our very first storefront, the, we have a picture, a video of Sister Tanya. Um, we were painting the storefront because we couldn't afford to pay people to paint it. And Sister Tanya sat in a corner in that storefront. I tell this story every time. Sister Tanya sat in a corner of the storefront was only 700 square feet. She sat in one corner for four hours painting that one corner. 
<laughs> we were like, Sister Tanya, are you finished with that corner yet, Sister Tanya? But I want to tell you, that not only did the corner get painted, but she stayed safe for the last 20 something years. So, so we're so grateful. Amen. Amen. And her parents have supported her every step of the way, every anniversary, every birthday, everything. They've always been here for, for her and for us. So we give God glory. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I have a few announcements. I want to, um, I want to encourage all of the, perhaps you are a daughter or a son sitting in this room, and you've lost your mom. And I know what that feels like. Both Pastor Robinson and I, he lost his mother last year and me um, about seven or eight years ago. And we both were extremely close to our mother, but I want to encourage my sweet sister like Sister Sierra. It's going to be okay, and I wanted to reach for you because what I want you to know is we got you. Yeah. Amen. We got you. And if, if you're a woman in this church or you're watching online and you lost your mother, I want you to know we are sensitive to that. And we are mindful of that. But you have brothers and sisters and spiritual and physical mothers and mentors and aunts in this church that if you will permit us to love you and walk through those valleys in those difficult days, I know how that feels when those days approach and there's no mom to call. That's okay. That's okay. We, we, the Lord is here and he's going to encourage you. In that. And it wasn't just Sierra and my husband, Sister Courtney. Where is Sister Courtney? I sent you a text last night because you just lost your mom. It hasn't been a month ago. But I just wanted you to know that we're thinking of you and the Lord is thinking of you. And what I learned about my text, y'all, I don't know how to operate my phone too good. Half of them didn't go through because I asked Sister Ella, I said, did you get the text I sent last night? And she said, no, no, what text? And I looked at all the texts. I sent about 10 texts to different people that the Lord placed on my heart. None of them went through and one of them was yours, Sister Courtney, as well. So I want you to know that the Lord is mindful of you and we're mindful of you and your mamas would be proud of you because the only thing a mother really wants, a mother wants from a son or a daughter, they want you to be saved. They want you to love the Lord. A degree, that, that's nice, that's for living. And schooling and education and all the stuff we encourage you guys to do, but at the end of the day, we just want you to love the Lord. And if you are successful in doing that, I'm going to tell you, you are successful. I wanted to run around this church this morning when my baby girl got up and sang that song. One, that's one of my favorite songs. But I just want her to be saved and, and love the Lord. She ain't got to make a million dollars. She ain't got to, no, I just want her to be saved and love the Lord. Amen. And I want her to remember that her mother was saved. And so I want to encourage you. We have a legacy to leave behind, right? We have to pass it on. This weekend, while, this week, this week while we were on a cruise about a month ago, many of us had an opportunity to go to the C.C. Winans concert. And while at that concert, I bought a book called Believe For It. If you went to that concert or if you are a reader, maybe you're an audible person, I want to encourage every woman in this room, get, it, get that book. It's called Believe For It. And it is by C.C. Winans. And when I tell you it will bless your soul, it's about passing on faith to the next generation. And you don't have to be a mother to do that. You can be a spiritual mentor. Amen. So maybe that word mother doesn't resonate with you yet because it didn't resonate with me before I had a child. That's okay. You can be somebody's spiritual mentor. And on that note, they showed a slide that Thursday the 18th, we're having a paint night for the young girls. And the way that paint night started is our initiative with the Boys and Girls Club. We, we go there once a month and we teach life skills and life lessons and integrity and character, but what we cannot do is talk about Christ in the setting because it's a nonprofit organization. And you know how it is, you talk about one God, you gotta talk about all gods and everybody don't believe the same. And those kids um, are exposed to a lot. And so we're building those relationships just one, one month at a time. And so I asked the director, could we take them on field trips? It was like, oh yeah, of course. 
I said, well, you do understand if I take them on a field trip, you know, whenever they go on a field trip, parents got to sign to agree to allow them to go wherever they're going. And so the field trip is harvest. Amen. Amen. <laughs> And you know we're going to be painting, but how about you know it ain't about no paint? All right? We got paint from the dollar store and paint they donated. But I have some, some women that love the Lord. And our mission is to bring those young girls here and allow them to have a good time, but to expose them to a spirit-filled environment and expose them to godly women and talk about Jesus because we're going to be talking about Jesus while they're painting. And the songs and the music is going to be about Jesus. And they can clap their hands and stump their feet. But it's going to be, any way we can get it, we're going to take it and just work on it. So we just need some help. Amen. So Sister Courtney is going to be leading this initiative. I will be out on a um, medical sabbatical. I will be having an outpatient surgery. And I will be out of pocket for the next six weeks. But I need some women to go along, alongside Sister Courtney and Sister Sierra, who will also be helping and is an educator and works well with young people. And so if you, if you think you got the time on Thursday, May 25th, for two hours, and, and probably about three because we need you here by four to help, if that is you, please see Sister Courtney on the way out. And we, we just need about four or five women to come and help with the pain and engage with the kids and serve the snacks. But in the meantime, when you're touching them, you're laying hands on them. Come on, somebody. You got to know what to do. You got to be kind and, and be sweet to them. And if, you know, sweet's just not in your diet, well, we're going to pass on this one because we're looking for somebody to be sweet. Amen. We just want you to be sweet. Please help us out with that because I don't want Sister Courtney to have to do it Courtney and Sister Sierra, who will be coming from work in Norfolk, and you know how Norfolk is. I don't, want to, I don't want them to have to do it themselves. But if you have some time to pour into these young girls and be a spiritual mentor, we admonish you to come and help us with that. Amen. God bless you. Let's stand. Let's stand. Wasn't Sister Minister Jill a blessing this morning? Oh, God bless you. She was a blessing. And God bless, God bless all the, the women in here that don't have children, but you act like somebody's mother, like Sister Barbara Till, who for 27 years been at all of our games and our kids' graduations and came with fat heads and pom-poms. If, if that's you, you know, Sister, Sister Williamson. I go to Sister Williamson and Mother Elsie, and where's Sister Betty? Sister Betty, Sister Betty reminds me of my grandmother because I come from an interracial family. And my grandmother is just as beautiful as she is. And so those three women, I go to mother, uh, Sister Williamson because my mom and my mother-in-law have passed. And I said, Sister Williamson, I need a mother's hug. Don't I tell you that? Just come give me a mother's hug. And she gives me my mother's hugs. And Sister Elsie, every time we see each other, we be all masked up but embracing because we need each other, right? Right? We need each other. And every woman needs a woman. Every, 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 Naomi needs a Ruth. Come on, every Elizabeth needs a, needs a Mary and vice versa. So I want to encourage you, if you don't have your person, get you a person. Go adopt a person, amen. God bless you. Let's lift our hands unto the Lord. Lord, we want to thank you for your service. Lord, we want to thank you for your leadership. Lord, we want to thank you for this sweet spirit. For all the brothers and sisters in the house of the Lord. Lord, it is my prayer that they've been encouraged and comforted and edified. Lord, that we all would embrace somebody and become a mentor to somebody. To pass on the generation and the legacy of faith that has been given to us by the men and women before us. Lord, we thank you and we praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Come on, sing our closing song. Oh, give thanks. You are dismissed, amen. Have a blessed mother.